So ladies and gentlemen, you're most welcome to our webinar today. Um, it is, uh, we are, there's a large number of people signed up for this because it is such a crucial issue at the moment. So we're delighted, in fact, we're extremely grateful that uh, Claudia Dorfos, the State Secretary of the Federal Ministry for Economic and Energy, Economic Affairs and Energy, has been prepared to take the time out to talk to us today. She will speak for, to us for about 20 minutes and then we will go to the question and answer with our audience. So you will be able to join the discussion using the question and answer function on Zoom, which you can see on the, I think everybody's used to that. So would you please send in your questions then throughout the session and then with your name and any affiliation if you have it and we will put them to the speaker then at the end. Um, just to remind you that today's presentation and question and answer are both on the record. Uh, please feel free to join the discussion using the handle at IIEA. So just to introduce our speaker, Claudia Dorfos was appointed Secretary of State at the um, Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy in May 2018. She previously held roles as Director General for European Policy and Head of the Trade Policy EU and WTO Division, both at the Federal Ministry of Economics and Technology and served in the economics division of the German Perm Rep to the European Union. So I'll hand over to you now and thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Catherine, and uh, hello to all the ladies and gentlemen around in Ireland and maybe even beyond. Um, before starting uh, this uh, meeting, we had the chance to talk a little bit among with Catherine and other uh, ladies and gentlemen to, to organizing this meeting. And we were just saying, okay, uh, we are a couple of days before Christmas and uh, everybody of course is mentally already prepared with Christmas. And even my colleagues here in the ministry, um, when asked to prepare a little bit for me for uh, talking to you, uh, wrote me, okay, it's a moment for reflection uh, because the German presidency ends on 31st December uh, 2020. That's fine, yes, but uh, we have a very exciting week still ahead of us or two and a half days ahead of us. Um, exciting and challenging um, because of the European Council, uh, which uh, will take place tomorrow and the day after. Um, with a lot of uh, very important decisions uh, to be taken and uh, also, of course, uh, because of Brexit negotiations uh, being in the tunnel and we don't know whether there will be light at the end of the tunnel or simply darkness. So, yes, very challenging and exciting times. Um, and I have to say the German Council Presidency until today was was very exciting as well because of course the challenging circumstances that we couldn't hold um, normal meetings live in Brussels or wherever here in informal meetings in in Germany but everything had to be done virtually um, which after all um, didn't um, come out as a as a problem frankly speaking uh, we were forced to concentrate maybe on um, a little less topics than we would normally deal with in, in Brussels when we meet live. Um, but um, that gave us the, the possibility at the same time to concentrate on the real topics. And I think um, we have managed to, to make some um, progress. We have made some decisions. We have... Um, um, concluded a lot of uh, council conclusions and uh, in so far prepared the, the frame the framework for the commission uh, who has to come up with a lot of legislative proposals next year because also of course the commission um, had uh, to suffer from COVID-19 in a way that they couldn't come up with all the proposals they had originally foreseen in 2020 so there will be a certain delay but no problem for us, I think, uh, because uh, we are in good cooperation with our trio partners, with Portugal and Slovenia, who will take the presidency after us. And I think everything will be in good hand. Now, the title indeed of my uh, speech today is Building a Competitive, Innovative and Resilient 
European economy. You can certainly imagine that economic uh, topics um, were already on our mind, in our mind and on our European agenda as a council presidency before the crisis. Um, but of course, with the crisis, it was quite clear that economic topics would uh, become even more important and would uh, be upgraded on the, the agenda of, uh, of Europe. Um, the two elements of the title, um, namely competitive and innovative, they were certainly in our minds, but there is a new facet, a, a little new element, which uh, was reinforced um, through the crisis, through the pandemic, namely resilient. And um, I will come back to that uh, later on. Now, um, of course, a part of our presidency in the economic world was to overcome the crisis, and it still is. Um, but the second part is to um, get recovery done. And there is a popular saying by Einstein, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. And in that respect, you can imagine that um, it was our um, firm intention, and it still is, uh, of combining both the crisis management together with recovery and an agenda for modernization. And I will walk you through my agenda of four Fs. Um, first F, there are two Fs in, in fact, freedom and frontiers. Second is finances. Third is fit for future. And fourth is fairness. Now, if we look on the first one, freedom and, and frontiers. I mean, you in Ireland, you are very well aware that the single market is really the backbone of European economy and is the source for economic growth and prosperity. However, I mean, if we think back a couple of months at the beginning of the pandemic in March specifically, um, we have seen the weakness of the single market because we have seen that borders were shut down, that uh, supply chains were interrupted, that export restrictions within the single market, I'm not talking about third countries, uh, took place. And that was really the moment where we said, hey, we are in Europe, we have a single market, this cannot be possible. And I don't exclude anybody from, from, from those. Uh, uh, we all had our... Uh, our guilty moments uh, in, in that respect. And so the first lesson we wanted to draw during the German council presidency in the economic field was um, to, to go back to a, a real single market. Um, and that is what the, the competitiveness ministers did in council conclusions in September uh, this year. They adopted some kind of I call it self-commitment, a commitment which says we have to avoid distortions uh, by unilateral measures. And again, an aspect which is very close to the hearts of Ireland, we have to remove unnecessary barriers in the single market and we have to prepare the single market for future uh, times, for future challenges and, and deepen it. And as you can see, again, our council conclusions are a combination of these aspects I mentioned before, namely crisis management plus future modernization. And here we have two instruments. One is, um, no, both are in the hands of the commission. The first one is the new single market enforcement task force, SMET called, where the commission together with member countries is to monitor uh, the implementation and the enforcement of the single market. So to see quite concretely where there are still impediments, where are they still unjustified barriers. And the second instrument is the strategic report the commission will come up with in January. And I'm sure that Ireland will be very much interested in, in further, probably recommendations of the commission, what we can do. Second, F, finance. You know, our motto of the Council Presidency is together for Europe's recovery. And 
we really meant it because it means that we wanted to act in a coordinated manner with cooperation and solidarity. And I think a good signal of solidarity and cooperation was that our heads of state and government um, managed to get an agreement on the multi-annual financial framework together with the temporary recovery instrument, Next Generation EU, and included in this, the Recovery and Resilience Facility in July. And then the German presidency could, of course, go into a trialogue with the uh, European Parliament. Now, after the trialogue, of course, it is very important that all member countries accept um, the agreement with Parliament and uh, um, you are probably all aware that there are still two member countries uh, who have had problems with it, not specifically with the MFF or the next generation EU instrument, but with the link to rule of law questions. And um, before coming here, I saw already some noises in the press that there was an agreement with Poland and Hungary. Um, I cannot yet comment on that because an agreement is, is only there once um, we succeed together with the presidents of the European Council uh, to have an agreement with all 27 uh, member countries. And it would be very important to have that agreement because of course uh, it would be necessary from the 1st of January next year to start with all the financial means available. It's one uh, 0.85 trillion euros for MFF, which is something for long-term investment and long-term economic growth. And this recovery instrument, which is temporary, um, means 750 billion, which are for recovery, as the name says, um, and with its very important part, the recovery and resilience facility, it also means, of course, preparing Europe uh, for the future, namely for a green and digital uh, transition. And from a German, probably you wouldn't expect anything else than saying yes, but of course, in accordance with the structural reforms um, asked uh, for by the European Commission in the country specific recommendations uh, in the context of the European semester. Last but not least, of course, there's also the cohesion package, 400 billion classical structural funds together with other new instruments like REACT EU and the Just Transition Fund. We here in my ministry, we are responsible for um, the um, trialogue on all those uh, cohesion package elements and Indeed, there are six regulations we wanted to conclude. I can tell you, uh, we have concluded already four. The fifth trilogue, or the trilogue on the fifth element is today and on the sixth one tomorrow. And I'm very optimistic that we succeed in getting them all agreed um, in, in December in a final round in, in Coreper, um, uh, which would indeed be necessary. But of course, everything depends on the broader agreement of uh, the uh, MFF uh, by our heads of state and government. Third element, and I alluded already in some way to it, fit for future. And this means, of course, in nowadays, um, with key elements like green and digital transition and on climate protection, um, it is, of course, our intention as somebody from Ministry of Economics, of course, you can imagine, um, to do it in a non-mutually exclusive way, hand in hand with a strong economy. Now, you might know that the Environment Council in October agreed upon the climate law, um, and we're already in trialogue with the European Parliament on that. Um, but there was one little but very important element left over for the heads of state and government, also on the agenda for this week um, and the European Council, namely the question whether we agree all to um, a climate target of minus 55% in 2030. So it will be interesting to see whether uh, our bosses uh, succeed uh, on this this week. Um, 
And it will also be important to make sure that other international partners will follow. Um, there are commitments made by China, there are commitments made by Japan, which go into the right direction. And of course, also the election of uh, President Biden and his uh, announcement that the United States would return to the Paris Agreement uh, opens up the opportunity for, for global progress. But of course, it is of absolute importance that we will do that in a way um, which guarantees a level playing field for, for business. And there we need an open debate. Um, there are instruments already discussed, the CO2 pricing, the protection from carbon leakage, which is very important specifically for energy intensive industries in Europe. There is this instrument which the Commission has announced, the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, and it will certainly also be a question uh, for the state aid guidelines to be um, updated in order to, to um, represent the, the new you know, combination of um, climate issues and um, level playing field. This is certainly th something which then will be discussed in 2021. Um, as we need the uh, legislative proposal from the Commission. But of course, you know, all the elements are already somewhere in our minds and, um, and we have been uh, discussing them. Now, priorities for the digital transition. Of course, I mean, again, it was quite clear before the pandemic that we need to catch up, to catch up in order to be on equal footing with the United States and with Asia. Um, but with the crisis, it became even clearer. And there is again a new element. I mentioned before the question of resilient. And here again, we have an element which is very close uh, to that, namely to strengthen our technical sovereignty, specifically with regard to key technologies like quantum technology, blockchain, microelectronics, uh, supercomputers, network technologies, and what have you. And I'll give you an example, an example on cloud computing and data infrastructure, because um, there is this project Gaia X. And uh, to be very honest, um, this is an invention of my minister, Peter Altmaier, um, who had the strong feeling that it was absolutely necessary uh, to go for an autonomous, secure, and trustworthy European data infrastructure, specifically to be determined to be a reliable cloud for SMEs in Europe. And um, we constructed this Gaia X project. Then we worked, as we sometimes do, uh, together with France um, in order to refine it. And now it is an open project for, for everybody. We have uh, a lot of companies from all over Europe and even abroad to work together with us in that uh, project. We had a, a summit, a Gaia X summit a couple of days ago. And we also have the commission on board now in supporting this project. And we have uh, signed a joint declaration on European Cloud Federation by our digital ministers meeting, the council on the 15th of October. Now on industry and SMEs as key players for the recovery. Um, yes, it has a little bit unfortunate by chance, not um, the commission's uh, uh, guilt, if I may say so, that only four weeks before the pandemic really arrived in Europe, the commission had presented an industrial strategy, which as it was there was practically a little bit outdated. Um, so what we did in the German presidency was to, you know, write together in council conclusions those um, ideas, those impressions we had, which should be added to a then updated um, industrial strategy with the, what the commission has announced for, for next year. And again, there was a new light motif, namely the strategic autonomy which we should go for always preserving an open economy it's not upon you know uh, creating walls uh, around Europe this is not the question but it means that we think that it should be necessary to create EU value added via pan-european corporations on 
innovative uh, key enabling technologies. And there is one very interesting uh, instrument, the IPCIs, Important Project of Common European Interest, which means that you get a little bit lighter conditions for, for state aid if you work together with, with at least um, three member countries. We have already some promising IPCIs um, in, in the pipeline on uh, microelectronics, for example, and also on battery cell production. Um, and this has created the idea that with these successful uh, lighthouse projects in Europe, we should also go for more. And uh, there will be the launch of a, of a new ambitious IPCI on hydrogen, for example. And we're also working on the next ones on an industrial cloud and communication technologies. So this is the new Europe working for something for strategic autonomy, again, without meaning that it any, has anything to do with closing down borders or protectionist ideas. On SMEs, which I know is uh, also very close to the hearts of, of Ireland, um, this of course is a permanent task to find adequate financing, to cutting red tape, uh, to find an SME friendly, friendly legislation and to support for research and innovation and also digitization. So what we did in the German presidency was again underlying that and repeating the principle of think small first. Uh, again, which should be, as I said, a permanent task. But we um, had a new idea on our better regulation agenda, which I would like to share with you, because we thought that, um, you know, sometimes it is difficult for innovative technologies um, to test whether they're really that good at an early stage. And that's why we um, transported to Europe the idea of a flexible framework for that. And that's, that means regulatory sandboxes and experimentation clauses. We have experience, only very short experience here in Germany with that, but we transported this idea to Europe. And uh, this is something that the Commission now has, has to work with, has to think about whether uh, we can try and find some of these uh, sandboxes or experimentation clauses in order to become more innovative. And there is another element which is important, not only for SMEs, but also for bigger country, uh, companies, of course, namely the idea of a one in one out rule. Again, something um, we have already in Europe in some member countries, including Germany, which means when you put on new EU legislation um, with, of course, regulatory burden, then you have to get out uh, of the nice parcel another legislation uh, in order to get rid of the same uh, level of regulatory burden. Um, this is something where we would have expected the Commission to come up with a uh, communication. Unfortunately, this has been delayed, uh, but um, we, uh, we had intensive discussions here in meetings, of course, virtual meetings uh, on that, where we asked the Commission to, you know, come up with uh, such a, a communication uh, uh, very soon. Um, we had also intensive discussions about um, making the SME test more rigorous, because of course, the rules are there. The Commission has to apply the SME test, but we had the feeling that maybe um, there are even there's more room to improve uh, the application. And this is what we have also um, fixed down in a presidency paper. Now, my last F is on fairness. And fairness, of course, uh, means um, global trade. Uh, means balanced trade, which we see as indispensable. Of course, we benefit all from, from open markets, and even so after the crisis, even more. And that is why our trade ministers agreed on conclusions saying we need to keep markets open, we need to strengthen the rule-based system um, for everybody. Um, and again, the aspect of resilience I mentioned already in the single market context is also valid for the global context. Uh, namely, we have to 
make sure that we have resilient international value chains, of course, without one-sided dependencies. So the key word is diversification. And again, it doesn't mean protectionism. Then um, another aspect on, on fairness, because for years, if I may say so, we have seen on the single market that companies heavily subsidized by third countries came to our European single market and our companies had to compete with those um, in the single market on the same terms is the idea. So this, this is why the Commission came up uh, with a white book uh, and we discussed it under the German presidency in the Competitiveness Council and there was broad support for the Commission to come up with legislative proposals uh, in order to make sure that uh, this competition will be on equal footing. The proposals will only be there next year, but we have prepared the ground for that. Of course, we will also, uh, we have also uh, identified the need and making further progress apart from the multilateral strand in WTO, for example, namely in bilateral trade negotiations. Um, Australia and New Zealand are still on their way and China uh, unfortunately, also because of the pandemic, but not only because of that, we have managed to get the investment agreement concluded. This is now something for uh, the Portuguese uh, presidency. And of course, when it comes to uh, bilateral trade issues, the, the uh, United States come into our mind again. And uh, with the president-elect Biden, of course, there is some hope. Uh, for positive effect on attempts to strengthen the multilateral trading system in WTO, but also maybe in WHO, World Health Organization, but also to uh, try and get rid of the trade disputes, the sanctions we have between the United States and, and Europe, and maybe also to come back to an agenda uh, which is uh, uh, of more economic weight than uh, just... Um, concluding on mini deals uh, for lobsters, uh, which is good. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, criticizing that, uh, but uh, I think the, the, uh, the hope for a complete um, um, discussion with the United States is, is, is there. Now, uh, last remark, um, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, UK, and maybe it's still difficult uh, for us uh, to uh, realize that uh, when we talk about relations with UK, it is now under the chapter of uh, international and global and bilateral trade agreements. Yes, indeed. I mean, you have all seen the press. Um, our negotiators are in a tunnel. Um, there will be a dinner for two, evidently, uh, tonight. And we can only cross our fingers that we will end up uh, with a positive result. I know how important it is for Ireland, of course, as it is in commercial terms also very important for us, of course. But for you, I think um, the very decisive point was also that along all the time, we have made sure uh, that there shouldn't be any danger for the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland. And I think uh, all the EU member countries uh, have stood firm behind Ireland on that. and. Um, my final conclusion is, of course, whenever we stand firm in unity and in solidarity together, then we have the chance to, to move ahead. And um, there is still a lot to do, of course, in bringing Europe back um, to the level before the crisis. But of course, as I said, the intention is to make it better, to make it more modern after the crisis. And so my hope is really that we will emerge from the crisis stronger than ever before. Thank you.